Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease. I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute for medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Hello, everyone. I am so excited today because we get to have my good friend Tabitha on the show today. Tabitha is a natural hair blogger who currently resides in Atlanta, Georgia. She's the mother of three, and oh my gosh, her kids are so adorable. Anyhow, she loves all things curls, love, and life. She started her natural hair journey in the spring of 2011, and she's been able to get to know herself in ways that she didn't even think were possible. She transfers her knowledge to her children, and she strives to ensure that they have a love for themselves and everything that they have to offer to this world. They make sure that they do it with love. Throughout her natural hair care journey, she has learned that while life constantly changes, you can always find love in a place that you never thought expected, and you have the capacity to love everyone around you. She works to inspire and educate other curly girls about the beauty of their hair and how to take care of it. I'm so excited to have her on the show today, and I really can't wait for you guys to hear all of the pearls of wisdom that she has to offer us. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey, everyone. I am so excited to have a very special guest on the show today. Today, we're going to be interviewing Tabitha Wiggins, and she is awesome. One of the things that we talked about last week was about our hair as it relates to our thyroid condition and how it's really important to take care of that. So I brought Tabitha on the show today just to talk about her particular journey with her hair and how to take care of it and how she's been able to transition into a quote unquote natural journey. And she's also a curly girl. So for all of my thyroid warriors out there that have the curls and all of the hair and the kinks or whatever it is that you identify with, we are going to address that today. So I'm so excited to have her and we are going to get started. So Tabitha, thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you for being involved. Thank you so much, Ebony, for having me on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. So I really just want you to provide our listeners with just some information on how it is that you came about this journey. Like, how did you get into it? What inspired you? Like, how did this all happen? Well, I think the biggest thing that inspired me on my natural journey is more so my daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, We typically, you know, want to start doing things differently or we start analyzing ourselves a little bit more. When we start having kids, especially little girls, because as we all know, our daughters look up to us and kind of watch everything we do. So I think when I got pregnant, I knew I was having a girl is when I really started to just think about various things in my life, especially my hair and just how I go about my hair journey and the things that I do to my hair and how that would affect her and her embracing her own curls. So I definitely always, you know, kind of give it to Ava as far as what got to be on my journey and got me started and really focused as much as I am now. Oh, that's so special. So tell us for there are so many quote unquote, natural hair bloggers out there. And can you just talk to us a little bit about what that means to go natural or to be natural? What is that? So I think what we term the, you know, the saying go natural, it's really a a word or phrase that we've coined. And I think of it more so as just returning to your roots per se. Um, whenever I hear anyone speak of I'm going natural, quote unquote, I think they've made the choice to like embrace their curls or embrace their hair as it grows from their scalp. Mm-hmm. I always say it gets a little deeper than that, though. There's definitely levels to the answer um, that created certain categories in the natural hair community. And a lot of the natural hair bloggers can kind of attest to that. And I think there's, you know, like I said, different levels. Like some women think going natural means like no longer chemically processing their hair in an effort to straighten their hair with relaxers. Um, This is acceptable, you know, to use no no heat manipulation and flat iron their hair um, Mm -hmm. to achieve the same straight results that they get when they're doing a relaxer. 
other girls kind of like myself, going natural is not only no heat, but it's also not putting any chemicals in their hair as far as color. So there's definitely mm. different levels. I would have never thought about that because I don't color my hair. So I right. didn't even think about that part. Oh, wow. So when it comes to that process, are there certain things that you have to think about when it comes to your hair? Like, are there different curl patterns? I've been hearing a lot of the, about this term called porosity. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that and how that works? Oh, yeah. So porosity is a fun topic for me. Um, it's something I've recently started taking interest to as it become more focused on just the health of my hair and not just necessarily, you know, just the curls. Um, by definition, porosity is basically like your hair's ability or inability to absorb moisture. Mm -hmm. That's what I've learned is the basis of it. So you can either have high porosity hair, you can have normal porosity or low porosity. And it's really based off of how much moisture your hair is going to absorb. Absorb, uh -huh. sorry. I see. So when you're going through this, I know me personally, having a thyroid condition, my hair is super duper dry. So I've often struggled trying to identify with that. But can you also talk a bit like I know there's porosity and how much moisture your hair absorbs or what have you. But I also mm -hmm. hear this thing about like, for A, B, C, D, and all that fun stuff. Like, can you kind of enlighten us on that? Like, I hear that so much, and I'm just trying to get an understanding of what that means. Right. So those are what we consider like the hair types, whether you're 4A, 4B, 3C, 3A. Um, they can get kind of deep. Um, I, for one, don't focus too much on hair types because I know every curly girl is different. Every curly hair girl ha can have multiple uh, hair types. I can have 3A and 4B in my hair. It just really depends. And then it also depends on the amount of heat you put in your hair that you can actually alter. So where you might have one hair type at one point, based off of the health of your hair, if there's any heat in your hair, um, sometimes the different factors like stress, what you're eating, your water intake can all kind of change that. So when girls come to me about, you know, the different hair types that they have, I tell them to start with that just as a basis or a foundation, but to understand that there's definitely can be multiple types of hair types in your hair. And at the end of the day, you have to do overall what's best for you. Mm, I see. So help me understand this too. So let's say, you know, for in my case, I cut all my hair off. I was like, ah, I don't know if my hair is falling out because it's chemically processed or is it because of my thyroid or is it because of the medication? I was over it. So I just cut it off. I was done. You know, <laughs> what what can you do from, you know, a hair care perspective when you're first getting started? Like, are there like three or five tips that you have to help folks that are just starting off on that journey? Yes. So for you, for example, what you're saying is like you cut all your hair off. So you did what you would consider like the quote unquote big chop, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I can definitely say for those girls out there who are considering and do the big chop, wanting to start fresh with their journey, there's definitely a couple of things that they can do. First thing I suggest is do your research on who's going to perform your big chop. I personally believe not all curls are created equal and not all hands are made um, to experience or being experienced enough to handle a curly girl and her cut. So I think it's important to find a stylist who's like taking that time to really learn the art of working with curly hair. This way you're going to get the best results and it's going to be done correctly. I'm very particular about who cuts my hair and put, who puts their hands in my hair. So you want to make sure you're going to someone who's skilled and trained to do that. Um, secondly, I'll definitely say, I say this second, but it could actually be something that you consider doing first, if mm -hmm. I'm being honest, mm -hmm. is make sure you're mentally ready for this step. A lot of times, you know, my followers or anyone who follows me on social media will hear me say natural hair journey is more than just hair. Right. I personally had to learn this myself. You know, I had a lot of friends, a lot of girlfriends around me who've done the big chop and they learned them, this themselves as well. You don't realize some of the mental changes you're going to go through once you big chop. Um, like I said, I've had to even go through this myself. It's 
sometimes we get so caught up in our physical features and attributes that we almost become some of them per se. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm using the example of our hair and we don't realize how much we depend on our hair or our beautiful skin or our weight or anything like that to define who we are. And when you take that away from yourself and you almost expose other parts of you, whether it be flaws or for my example, cutting my own hair, I exposed my skin more and my face more. And I really had to learn how to embrace all of me. Mm. So it was a mental step that I, I had to be prepared for. So I tend to suggest to people to mentally get prepared for that at first. It's, you don't know what's going to come when you do that big chop and you want to you know, feel good about it and feel good about yourself and understand that it is just hair. It will grow back and to always embrace that journey and just definitely be prepared for that. And what are some other things? Like, I know we talked about research and making sure that the person doing your big chop is trained and is familiar with that and to be mentally ready. Are there other things that you would suggest to help those folks getting started on this journey? Um, Stay focused on your goals that you initially created for yourself when you decided to go natural. Like I said, this is more than just hair. It is a lifestyle journey, in my opinion, as well. So if your initial goals when you decided to go natural, quote unquote, were to not stress as much, if the stress was a part of the problem of losing your hair or to take better care of your hair, or I'm not going to add heat, which was one of my examples, stay focused on those goals so that as you're going through this journey, you're reminded of why you started and it really will help prevent you from having to start over multiple times. Take it from me because I have started over multiple times because a lot of times I lose sight of what my true goals are. And it's not until I make those mistakes and start over that I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm reminded why I did this in the first place. I'm reminded why I didn't want any heat or I'm reminded of why I tried to reduce the stress in my life um, and the effects that it can have on my hair. Got it. Those are all great gems that I think are super important for anyone going on this journey. And I wish I would have started off at this point as well. And that kind of takes me to my next question. (laughs) And how about the weather? Um, were there any changes in your hair when it came to weather, like when it was more humid out, you know, or if it was dry, like were there differences that you noticed in your hair during a difference in the seasons or a change in the season? Oh, definitely. Definitely different changes with the weather. So I actually did a YouTube video on this a few months ago. I don't know if it's because I'm a summer baby. So everything about me just thrives during the warmer months, but my hair absolutely dread the winter. Mm -hmm. Um, And the worst part about it is I travel for work sometimes. So this past winter, I had to travel to what I consider the coldest of the cold, which was Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, my. And that cold air and that cold weather wrecked absolute havoc on my hair. And I think, you know, I've been on this natural hair journey for some time now. But you know, our winter months down where the area I'm living in in the south aren't as harsh. So I'm still trying to learn how to handle my hair in the winter, um, especially because our our winters aren't that long here. But being in Salt Lake City this past winter, I definitely had, you know, more time to realize the amount of damage that my hair sees. Like I have increased dryness. I see I have more frizz. None of my normal products work. I had to completely switch up my hair care routine. Um, I had to use more butters, more butters, more oils. I just completely different. So I've noticed personally for me, that the winter months or, you know, just seasonal changes definitely make a difference with my hair. So it's important just to switch up your routine. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to use the same techniques and products. You really have to listen to your hair and give it what it needs. Mm -hmm. So that way, for me, when the summertime rolls back around, I'm not set back. Got it. So weather is something that gets me every time I usually walk around with a complete and total afro in the summer months because here in the DMV area it's super humid and I can try my hardest but it just it's it's a bad program (laughs) right (laughs) right it's just bad so one of the things that I really really got really good at was 
changing my diet. And as soon as I changed my diet, my hair just started thriving. You know, from your experience, could you talk a little bit more about the importance of diet and water, for example, when it comes to your hair health? Because a lot of times we're like, well, you know, it's my hair. But we don't recognize how important it is when you're feeding your body, you're also feeding your hair. So could you talk a little bit more about that? Oh, yes. Okay, Ebony. Yeah, this is a huge one for me. And, you know, I don't hesitate to say that certain things I'm just now learning in this particular topic in itself has become almost like an obsession to me lately, Mm -hmm. because I am truly learning that what you eat matters. So like I said, I typically travel for work. Um, So my schedule is nonstop crazy. But what I'm starting to notice is that my hair is affected by what I'm eating and how busy I am. So in some of my research, like I'm learning about myself, it completely blew my mind. But sugar, oddly enough, is negatively affecting my hair. Mm -hmm. When I'm busy, I tend to snack more. I tend to binge eat. I just, I'm not eating healthy, period. And I'm taking in a lot of processed sugars. And I'm noticing my hair just, it's just not good. Like I said, the products don't work. Um, I feel, you know, dryness. So in my research, I'm learning that the increase in sugar produces more insulin that actually binds to the hair cuticle. Mm. And it, of course, makes it weaker. Yeah, it just, it makes it weaker. It causes it to not be able to grow. And sometimes increased insulin can actually make your hair fall out. Oh, dear. Yeah. So where I'm thinking it's just the stress, like, oh my God, you know, my edges are thinner. I'm stressed out. I'm busy. It's also me not paying attention to when I am busy and when I am stressed out and I'm snacking more and I'm taking in all those processed sugars. My, like I said, my edges are thinner. My hair doesn't really thrive. It doesn't grow. So I'm starting to put all this together and it opened my eyes to what else am I eating and what else am I doing and putting into my body that's not helping. And like you said, water is important. And I'm trying to kind of balance that out by drinking more water, but it's really opened my eyes to realize what I'm putting in my body is affecting my hair. Oh, I'm so happy you said that, particularly about, you know, the spikes in your blood sugar and your insulin and all that stuff, because a lot of folks who have thyroid conditions also have issues with maintaining and controlling their blood sugar. So that's also really, really important, you guys, to really keep that in mind. And that's why in the guide that I have, I really talk about the importance of reducing your processed food intake because that can really have an impact on so many things. And we're getting a great example today about how that overload of sugar in your system especially can impact things like your hair. So I'm so happy you talked about that, Tabitha. So I have another question for you. I know I'm full of questions today. Um, (laughs) It's okay. Talk about some of the key tools that you use. Like, for example... I am just now realizing, oh, when I wash my hair, I use a T-shirt instead of a towel because it's a lot more gentle on my hair because it's weak when it's wet and all that fun stuff in a wide tooth comb. And some people use a diffuser when they're blow drying their hair and all that fun stuff. So could you talk about some of those tools that are really helpful in taming your curly locks? Of course. So, yes, definitely a T-shirt either a t-shirt turban or there's a lot of different, you know, quote unquote t-shirt products out there for you. Those are great. That's a great example um, because it does reduce the amount of frizz that you're putting on your cuticles. So that's definitely something I have incorporated into my hair care routine. Um, I'll definitely say a cute head wrap. Um, Mm -hmm. And I say certain tools that also help again, how we feel about the process and the journey that we're on. So not all hair days are going to be great hair days. Um, we're not all going to have those, you know, two hours that we might need to make our hair look the best. So just something quick. It could be a cute head wrap. Um, if you get up in the morning, you got some errands to run and you just want to do something quick to be able to, you know, get out the door and not really put a lot of time and effort into your hair. You can always go with a head wrap. I say a good misting spray bottle. Mm-hmm. It's important to hydrate and moisturize your hair. So every day, whenever I get up and I go to style it, even if I'm not doing a lot of manipulation to it, I always make sure I refresh my curls or mist it with some water. So I definitely say a good um, misting spray bottle. A detangling tool. I know I'm me personally right now. I'm I'm 
kind of on edge between if I want to use my fingers or if I kind of want to use a tool. So I'm very gentle if I do use a detangling tool. So I'll say a either wide tooth comb or a detangling brush specifically created to detangle hair because you want to make sure you're not ripping through your curls. Mm. It's very important. Not all brushes are good for curly girls. Um, bobby pins. Oh my God, bobby pins. Get a thousand of them. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're like, it's something that curly girls don't really think about. Um, Cause you think, you know, maybe long, straight, flowy hair, you want to bobby pin it up, but bobby pins are great for curly girls to manipulate their hair and create versatile styles. So I say a million of them because we know we lose bobby pins. They're in the bottom of our purse. They're in our car. My you know, husband I, I steps bobby pins on them my all dryer. the time. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. I find them in my dryer because I put them in my pocket. Like I have bobby pins everywhere. So get a thousand. Um, d- shower caps, disposable shower caps. Um, it's important to deep condition. I personally say deep condition at least once a week or, of course, you know, what your hair requires. So you want to keep disposable shower caps on hand. Uh, to be able to aid in your deep conditioning. And when I think of that, I think of a stand-up dryer. Mm-hmm. That'll help in the deep conditioning process because sometimes you want to do a good deep condition, and that includes sitting under heat. So getting you a stand-up dryer will help. Um, for health of the hair and protecting the hair, you might want to do either a silk bonnet, a silk pillowcase, or I have something that's called a lock sock, which is something that I put on my hair to kind of like go to sleep in, and it helps not create that friction that a cotton pillowcase would do. Mm. Um, yeah. So those are definitely a couple of tools. Oh, and a puff cuff. Um, yeah. I absolutely love it. It's a hair tool that you actually use instead of a hair tie, the traditional hair ties that we have. And it creates less breakage on your hair. It puts less tension on your hair. And it comes in various sizes and really helps you to create styles with little manipulation. Mm, I like that. I like it a lot. And so on the same lines of the tools, what about products? Because there are so many things out there. And one of my best friends, she actually used the Diva Curl line. And she said that Mm -hmm. she liked it. And, you know, but her hair is still very dry. So could you just talk a little bit more about products that you think are really good for curly girls, especially? Right. So I always say that the number one product for curly girls was God given and that's water. That is the number one product. Start there. Water, that moisture, that hydration that you need. That's the best thing that you can do for your hair. From there, it, it kind of goes based off the girls. Some girls need butter. Some girls need more gels um, and some need oil. So for me personally, I'm a butter and an oil type of girl. Um, so find an oil that helps with the health of your hair helps to seal in that moisture, that first line of defense that I call it, which is water. For me, I love argan oil. Mm -hmm. I love olive oil too, but argan oil is a really, really good one. It's really healthy for my hair. It helps with the growth of my hair as well. And it's not too heavy. It doesn't really weigh my hair down. Um, Like I said, I like a lot of butters, but Diva Curl is an amazing product line. It -hmm. definitely is. It's one of the first ones that I tried. So tell your girlfriend, she's definitely on a a good path. (laughs) And it doesn't, what I love about Diva Curl is they do not have a million options. Not that a million options is wrong because, you know, curly girls, we like to switch it up and we like to try different things. But Diva Curl is that basic one, two, three step Mm -hmm. where you have a clarifier, a conditioner, they have a deep conditioner and then a styler product. Mm -hmm. So they're a really good line to use. Got it. So what if, for example, for me, like, I might not need all of the oils and the butters and I can just take my hair, you know, use a nice shampoo and conditioner and it's just ready to go. I might use a diffuser. I might not. Are there other things that they could use to help them as well so that, you know, if I just get up and go and I just shake out my curls and I'm good to go? Is that sufficient or should I make sure that the shampoo and conditioner that I use is also, let's say, sulfate free or high moisture, for example? Definitely. I definitely suggest that. So I personally follow the Curly Girl method. And within that method, we believe in, you know, minimal manipulation to the hair. So that's what you said, getting up in the morning and kind of refreshing your curls. What that base, that foundation that's important, that's water. 
So spray in some water to increase that moisture, shake out your curls and go. That provides me that minimal manipulation. As far as the shampoos, it's totally up to you. But with the Curly Girl Method, we definitely believe in, you know, no suds because those suds kind of strip away that moisture in our hair that we need. We thrive off of moisture as curly girls. Um, mm-hmm. No sulfate, um, stuff like that. So you'll, you'll see a lot of that on your product. And some lines, unfortunately, Ebony, they advertise no sulfates, no, um, you know, all the, all the bad curly girl stuff, mm-hmm. but you have to read the ingredients. It's ah. very important to read it because they, they still slip those in there sometimes. That's really good to know. Yeah. It'll say no sulfates, no silicones on the bottle. But when you read those ingredients, you're like three ingredients in, I see a sulfate. I <laughs> so I always, I, I always suggest, because a lot of times my girlfriends are like, you are in the hair aisle for like an hour. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm reading these bottles because I, <laughs> I am not just trusting the front of these labels. They will make them pretty and package them cute to catch our eye. And no, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read these labels to make sure what I'm putting in my hair follows that curly girl method. So what about protecting against heat damage? Like I know there are a lot of serums and sprays and all that stuff. Do you have a particular product that you like to use that protects your hair if you do decide to straighten it, let's say? So I, in particular, don't have a particular product. And that's only because the path that I'm on with my curly journey is just no heat Mm -hmm. um, right now. Um, That's just where I am with it. Um, Like I said, at the beginning, there's Different levels to this are some curly girls who don't believe in heat at all, don't want any chemical processes, whether it's relaxers or, um, like I said, heat manipulation or even color. So as far as to protect you against heat manipulation, I personally believe the best protection is just no heat whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But they do make a lot of different products out there as far as, like you said, oils or sprays that they're saying you can spray on your hair to help protect it. What I'll say to kind of aid in that is if you're going to use them, do not put heat on your hair every single day. Use them that one good time. Um, and then, you know, just kind of rock out with your, your straight hair for however long you can. But do not add additional heat to your hair every day. I know a lot of people tend to do that. Mm-hmm. That's definitely something that I learned very quickly that I could not do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Every day. So I know a lot of people who still do that. They They're like, okay, well, I'm doing good. I'm on my curly hair journey because, you know, I'm not putting a relaxer in my hair. I'm just putting heat. But then they're putting heat on their hair every morning. They do that good blowout at the salon. And then, you know, every morning as they're getting ready for their day, they add a little bit of heat. And then when they try to have a curly style, they're set back and they're noticing a lot of straight pieces. And that's because they're adding so much heat manipulation to their hair. So it's important to, to minimize that as much as possible. Got it. There are just so many things to think about. Like, are are there things that you wish you would have known when you started out on this journey that you would provide to someone new going through this process? Oh, yeah. Don't be hard on yourself. Um, something that I didn't realize at the beginning is that I would start over again and again. Didn't even cross my mind. I was like, oh, I'm going on this curly hair journey. I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for my daughter. This is going to be amazing. I didn't leave room for myself to understand that I would not be perfect. Um, I wish I wasn't so hard on myself. I wish I would have acknowledged that this was something I was going to have to learn and that it was new to me and I would make mistakes. So that way, when I did start over, I could look at it as a fresh start and a chance to, you know, improve off of what I've learned. So I definitely suggest that people just know that it's okay. (laughs) You know, as we make mistakes, we're all learning together. Um, And then something else I wish I knew is how much stress and what I put in my body, like we said earlier, affected my hair, because that would have helped me not start over certain times. Mm. That's definitely good to know. Stress is just one of those things that can really get you in a lot of trouble. And it's so unfortunate because a lot of times we don't even recognize when we're stressed out. Right. Exactly. It stress it appears in so many different ways. Like you said, we don't even know. I don't realize when I clean, <laughs> I'm actually, well, not saying when I clean, I'm stressed because of course I clean. But when I like get into my moments where I'm just running around the house cleaning and I don't even understand why. Sometimes I have to realize what type of your stress. 
Mm-hmm. And this is just, that's my outlet sometimes. So yeah. Oh, Stress shows up in various ways. Oh, it does. I just use cooking as a form of stress relief to get that all out. And my husband <laughs> loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just and my husband wishes that that was my outlet. <laughs> he would love if I wanted to get in the kitchen every time I was stressed out. Exactly. So just knowing that you would have what you would have known about those things. What about some of your biggest takeaways? The biggest takeaway for me is I've learned to embrace this journey. I've definitely learned to embrace it because it that's what it truly is. This is a journey. Um, I've learned to reach out for support. This is a huge community. The whether you're a blogger, a YouTuber, the natural hair community in itself is a huge community and it's filled with love and a lot of people who are around to just not only guide me, but other newcomers and other new natural curly girls. So a lot of us have already done that research and gone through some of the same struggles that the newly natural girls are going to go through. So even though I tell them, you know, YouTube and Instagram and various other social media platforms are a great tool to find their place in this community and to learn. It's also important for them to keep in mind that this journey is very individualized. Mm -hmm. So what I go through and what I post about and what I talk about, I want them to take certain pieces from that, but I also want them to focus on their own own journey. You know, take pieces from different people and different bloggers and different people on YouTube and use what you can, but no, don't take it all. Embrace your own journey. Right. Um, no two journeys are the same. So it's important just to take like what applies to you and leave the rest behind. And then, you know, we talked earlier about the hair types. And even though they're a good foundation to start with, as you're learning your hair, I always tell them don't obsess over it. And don't obsess over the bad hair days that you get because even I mean, hashtag hair girl, (laughs) the hair girl people you have, we even have those bad hair days. I have a lot of people who walk up to me and say, oh, my God, I love your hair. And I'm like, really? This is like a bad hair day for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> like a horrible day. Like, thank you. I needed that. You increased my confidence. But like we even have our own bad hair days. So I think the biggest takeaway is just it's a journey filled with a lot of learning about yourself, learning about your own limits that you have, your internal limits, some limits that you didn't even realize that you had. Um, it, this journey makes you unique and it makes you different. So just embrace it. and truly enjoy every day and all the things that you're going to learn about yourself. Hmm. I love it. I just think of <laughs> India Hari's song, like when she says, I'm not my hair, I'm not my skin. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, mm-hmm. that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think that song came out, you know, right before I really got on the journey and definitely before I decided, because at one point I went three straight years without putting heat in my hair. Um, but yeah, that, that song resonates to me because wow. it's, it's true. I'm, I'm not my hair. I'm not my skin. This is just awesome. I have absolutely loved all of the wonderful gems that you have provided for us today. So if there are folks out there that are like, Ooh, I like her. This is good info. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, you. Yes. <laughs> you know, how do we learn more about you? Where do we find you? Where do you hang out at? Um, well, you can definitely find me on Facebook and Instagram on my social medias. Uh, my Instagram and Facebook handle is Coco Brown Curls X O C O C O A Brown Curls with the X O at the end, and the X O means love and hugs and infinity and such. Mm-hmm. And then I have a website too, where I tend to put up a lot of my pictures and my blog posts. And I always say we talk curls, love, and life because this is a journey. It's not just about curls. Mm-hmm. And my website is just www.cocobrowncurlsxo.com. Awesome. So I'd love for you guys to stop by my website and leave a comment and read my about me and see some of the pictures and some of the upcoming events and such that I have going on in my area. That is awesome. So where exactly are you so that if folks are local to you, they can find out about the events that you have going on? I am located in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Good old Atlanta. Yeah. We are trying to kill it. (laughs) I have a couple of friends down there. I might have to plan a trip. (laughs) Yes, I would love it. We have so much stuff coming up, too. April is like hair month for us down here. We have the World Natural Hair Show. There's a lot of good things going on. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, Tabitha, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. And I'm so excited to have had you. And just for all of our listeners, I'll make sure that all of Tabitha's information is in the show notes and you guys will be able to reach her, stop by, say hello to her on Instagram or on Facebook. And she has so much good stuff coming. So I will definitely make sure that you guys have access to all of that. So as normal, guys, be well, be healthy, and take care. Talk to you soon. Okay, thyroid warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, be great, reflect on your triumphs, and as always, be well. Take care.